Uh, what's up guys welcome to the most requested episode of the year so far <laughs> so my inbox and my dms and my comments have been completely full of nothing but do astrophotography for the s21 ultra <laughs> so here we are not a cloud in the sky in typical new mexico fashion it's also freezing because we're 7,000 feet up but uh we've got great stars great skies so let's get this rolling for you guys. So what I have set up here. All right, so let's open up my camera here. So we're in pro mode. There's a couple of new things to pro mode. I'm gonna have an entire video like I always do on the pro mode where we're gonna go through all the features and everything and the hows and the whens and the whys using it. Uh, but for now, I'm just gonna walk you through my steps here. The, the main thing that I'm most excited about for pro mode, the addition of finally, uh, Samsung first is they're finally allowing us to use the ultra wide angle in pro mode still no telephoto come on Samsung if you're watching this hook it up it's not that hard just give us a telephoto <laughs> but for right now beggars can't be choosers we're very happy we finally got the wide angle so I'm going to utilize that tonight and I'm going to look at the differences between the ultra wide and the regular in pro mode uh, for the stars. So right now there's no Milky Way. A lot of you guys are asking me for Milky Way if you don't know anything about physics or the earth or rotation of stars and planets and all that stuff. <laughs> we got to wait about another six to eight weeks before we could get to Milky Way season. So right now I've got the constellation Orion which is super famous. Everybody should know it and it's really cool to look at and I've got this nice yucca. So we're going to go in here. The first thing that we want to do is we want to adjust our shutter speed. So in this case, since we're on the ultra wide, I'm going to go ahead and open it up all the way to 30 seconds. The next thing that we're going to want to do is adjust our ISO. So we have the option to go all the way up to 3200. I do not want to do that because this is a phone and I don't care how good you think a phone is. The sensor is this big or smaller. <laughs> so we want to reserve 3200 for extreme situations so I'm gonna back it down to about 640 and if you'll notice right here next to the shutter button you can see the little plus minus and it has a plus one in gray you can see if I move this that it's changing now to plus two that's the exposure value that's what it's metering it at and it's telling me that i'm a stop over what it thinks is over so that's just kind of a, a quick little guide to help us figure out exposure but in in nighttime though that doesn't really mean much uh, it's more helpful during the daytime when things are blown out but nothing's going to be blown out right now so this is kind of a guesstimate i just i do a lot of astrophotography so i kind of know the ballpark of what i want i'm going to go with 640 I'm gonna leave the white balance in auto right now. I don't need to change it because I'll just change it in post. Uh, if I was setting up a time lapse or a shot that I really cared about, I would say go ahead and change your white balance to whatever it is you want it. But for right now, leaving it in auto is fine. The next most important thing for astrophotography on the phone is manual focus. So I've talked about this before in Samsung promo videos, in astro videos with the phone. It's kind of difficult to find what the actual infinity is because if I go all the way over here to this mountain I found that on my s20 ultra that that the mountain is not infinity so putting it out there my photos were still blurry my my stars were still blurry so it's I just I don't know how to find it other than just move it down one tick at a time so we can go in here and you can see if my fingers would stop doing that you can see sliding it if we move it one tick at a time until we get uh, the infinity the whatever it is super far away in focus that's gonna be our our sign there that we're then then we'll keep it in manual focus and keep it locked down take this shot we're in the ultra wide Brittany you want to hit the cactus there uh, for a second so I can make sure my framing is right with the big light, the big light. Oh. All right, so let me take a look here. So what we're seeing right now is we're seeing the JPEG version. So the Samsung phones, there's no way to get it to do raw only. And before I go on, we should mention that you need to 
go in here to your settings and we need to come out to format and advanced options and we need to make sure that this raw copies is turned on okay so that's the most important thing there for that setting but let's look at this this is the JPEG image on the back of the phone and the stars look okay they still don't look great but it's also a phone so it's kinda hard to make that uh, make that call there on is it just a bad image or is it just the motion blur I don't I don't see any motion blur so that looks good okay so let's look at this real quick so we slide over you'll see now this image is the raw image and you'll notice that the raw image looks absolutely horrible and the reason why is you see all the noise in there and and all of that stuff how grainy and everything it is that's because when Samsung saves this JPEG, it's applying its own corrections. So in the camera, when it does the JPEGs, it's applying the noise reduction and the sharpening and all of that stuff. So the raw right on the back of the screen is going to look like crap compared to the JPEG. But we're going to go into Photoshop after this and we're going to clean it up and we're going to see the differences between cleaning up the raw and then the JPEG and which one we like better. All right. Well, You've seen how I'm doing it on here in the in the phone. Um, I am going to grab a couple shots. I'm going to switch this out, and I'm going to grab a couple shots. Well, that's taking a picture. That's going to be a really weird looking picture. <laughs> I'm going to grab a couple shots with my S20 Ultra for comparison, and then we will take it back inside to Photoshop and we'll go from there and kind of edit we'll edit and evaluate the images and see uh, how the S21 Ultra is to the S20 Ultra <laughs> So it's the next morning, got our green tea ready. I have not looked at these photos at all yet. I just, just right now dumped them onto the computer and we're all gonna be seeing this for the same time except for what I've already seen on the back of the screen while I was out there. So I think this is the first image that I wanna look at. This is the S21 Ultra with uh, 15 seconds and ISO 400. That's definitely gonna be in the ballpark of where I would rather have the ISO uh, versus where I might need it to be. You know, when, when you take a look at this image, you also have to realize that like, when I did the Milky Way image with the S20 Ultra, shooting the Milky Way also inherently, there's a little bit more light there in the sky. Uh, but this is a super dark night. We're in New Mexico. We're 7,000 feet up. There's not a lot of light pollution. You see a little bit back here in the background, but for the most part, this is a super dark sky. And that's definitely gonna be the hardest situation for the phone to handle. But we can see Orion right here, we can see the belt, and we can actually see, let me zoom in a little more. So this blur right here, this little blur in the middle is actually not a star, that's actually the nebula of Orion. So that's Orion's nebula. And I've shot this before with real cameras, and it looks like this. I might try doing it with my phone. Uh, if you guys are interested in seeing something like that, on if it's possible to capture this with a phone uh, using my telescope. And I might consider, if I get enough interest, doing that with the phone. But you can see uh, Beetlejuice here, and you can see Sirius so there's a bunch of bright stars the problem is they are looking a little bit out of focus so if we look down here the cactus and also the background are out of focus now if I'm zooming out and I'm just gonna go ahead and edit this and post it on Instagram especially with a little bit of sharpening uh, it probably will be okay and maybe I'll try that and see if this can be a usable image but I want to go ahead and take a look at a couple of the other images and see because like I mentioned before when I was out there 
getting sharpness, uh, getting the right focus. You can't use autofocus in this situation. Autofocus probably would have snapped to the cactus, uh, but then the stars would have been even more blurry. So it's all about finding that balance. But aside from that, if we look at the noise, we're looking really good, actually. Um, it looked worse on the back of my screen than it does here, and that surprises me. So if we were even to come down here and just do a little bit of noise reduction, like 20. And then the big thing here is make sure we have this color reduction was already applied by default, which is interesting. But yeah, we, we want about, I don't usually like to go over more than 25 or so with the color reduction. You can tell we've got a little bit of vignetting from the lens, uh, but that's okay. That's a pretty easy fix. So we can remove chromatic aberration, that'll help around the stars a little bit. And then we can come over here to manual and we can just bring that vignetting out a little bit if we wanted to. So some basic editings, a principle that I have with phone editing, I'm just gonna do a little bit of brush work in here. The principle that I have with phone editing and especially with phone astro editing is I don't like to push them too hard because again, those little tiny sensors, uh, they just, the, the detail, even though it's a raw image, it's not going to hold up very well, especially if you've done any type of real photography work from a, a camera with a much bigger sensor before. It's just not gonna hold up. So I'm not going to push it that hard. All right, I mean, that's not looking horrible. So that's the first image. Again, let's go through and see if we can find one that's actually uh, better in focus. This one looks, so here's one, 30 seconds. So now we're gonna start seeing, we see that motion blur. That's the motion blur that we're seeing from the rotation of the earth to the stars respectively. And that's because we exceeded uh, the shutter length limit. It should have been more like 25 or so, but if we look at stuff that's not moving, uh, that's looking maybe about the same, actually. So here's the ultra-wide angle in pro mode, which uh, is amazing that they finally did that. Now, let's... The problem is it's a little too wide for my composition. I, I don't like the composition anymore, but I can potentially fix that. So this is sharper now. The cactus is sharper and the background is a little bit sharper. This is at, so it's interesting, look at this, the f-stop for the ultra-wide and pro mode is f2.2, so that's something that uh, I didn't really realize or think about, so that means there's less light coming in um, that compared to the main sensor. And then also where I had to bump it up to ISO 1600 right here, so you can see a lot of that noise. Let's see if we can clean it up just a hair. So that's a before and that's an after with noise reduction applied to about 30. And that definitely helps. All right, we fix that tint there a little bit and that white balance on the foreground looks a little bit better now. So again, I'm really not doing a whole lot to the global tweaking, a little bit of saturation and vibrance. Uh, I did a little bit of clarity. So if we crop this to a four by five and then bring it in just a little bit, the more you crop, obviously keep in mind the more you're going to show the flaws of the image because you're cropping in on those pixels that are already not the best in the world but overall that looks a little bit better you can see Orion is a lot smaller in that wide angle I didn't think that that wide angle was going to be as wide uh, and that's really impressive so that's going to come in handy for a Milky Way season for sure so we can see here on this one I changed the focus and I nailed the focus on the cactus pretty much it's still maybe just a hair soft but 
at 100% crop that's that's looking pretty good so but now you can see the stars are definitely a little blurry from the 30 seconds and a little blurry from the motion I mean from the uh, focus so you could focus stack but I didn't do any of that because this is super beginner level stuff that's why I backed up from this so I for composition wise artistically speaking I probably would have liked to get a little closer to this cactus and then do a focus stack where I focus one on the cactus and then one on the stars uh, but I didn't do that so I backed up so that infinity would be more likely to get uh, everything in focus in one shot alright so I think this is about the happiest I'm gonna get with any of the images I got last night in terms of sharpness the sharp the stars look a little sharper they're the motion blur though because again the 30 seconds so you can see Orion's nebula right there you can almost see the nebula clouds there the dust clouds uh, but let's just back out of that so again when we're just looking at this in regular I'm just gonna go ahead and so when we're just looking at this backed out and not zoomed in I, I do think that it looks okay and I'm gonna go with uh, this being the best I could get. Alright, so that's about the best I think that we're going to do with the 21 Ultra. So let's back out and take a look at the S20 Ultra. So this isn't super scientific, it wasn't exactly uh, the same in terms of you know composition and setup and all that, but I think the settings were the same here. So let's go with this one here 30 seconds ISO 800 uh, on the regular not the wide angle so we're seeing definitely the star trails again but the stars there's Orion's Nebula again so we're seeing those star trails uh, but this looks way more in focus so the background there this is a copper mine back there and you can see the mountain ridge and then you can also see the cactus is a lot sharper so I just happen to know on my S20 Ultra because I've messed with it for so long where that focus point is for infinity and it's four ticks uh, below the mountain symbol the infinity symbol on my S20 Ultra and it wasn't the same on the S21 Ultra so let me just clean this up a little bit you can definitely see the auto white balance was different. All right, so here we can see the two. We have the S21 Ultra on the left and the S20 Ultra on the right. So you can definitely see the difference in auto uh, in terms of the colors. So just the white balance was different because I left it in auto, like I said. So aside from that, let's zoom in to a hundred percent so this is the star Sirius this is a great uh, reference star for a lot of things in astronomy and astrophotography uh, but we're just looking at the noise difference here I've applied exactly the same uh, noise correction to each one so there does appear to be a little bit more color noise in the S21 actually than the S20 and then you can clearly see the focusing differences uh, again this is the S20 the Ultra was the S20 Ultra was focused clearly more towards infinity than the S21 uh, but other than that in terms of just sheer image quality they're so similar that I'm just having a really hard time saying that the S21 would be definitively better or the S20 is still better or whatever even though I have uh, heard or read or whatever that the S21 does have a slightly newer better sensor and it has the color depth so that might be the difference that you're seeing there is the 12-bit color depth between the S21 Ultra and then the 10-bit color depth between the S20 Ultra I did note on my last video with the landscape photography that the colors looked better on the S21. They looked a little popular, a little more vibrant uh, with the HDR and auto. Or that could be due to the 
the 12-bit color depth on the S21. So just for the heck of it, since we did that, let's go look at, since we were out there, let's go look at the S21. I took a couple of shots in a darker part of the sky towards the, the, uh, the northwestern part of the Milky Way. So it's not the core of the Milky Way, obviously. But I just wanted to see what, if we push the ISO super hard, uh, what we're looking at. So here is 30 seconds ISO 1600 and it can go up to 3200 so it's not even the highest it can go and this just looks absolutely atrocious. This just looks, com for me this is completely unusable. So we're also seeing that 30 second limitation there. We're seeing a little bit of a, a blur due to the motion blur but I don't even want to bother trying to clean this up. And this is on the S21 Ultra. And again though, we've got that, that ultra wide angle is the f2.2 versus the uh, f1.8 on the main sensor. So I would say if you can, probably if you want to get the most out of your sensor and the light and everything, stick to the main sensor and then if you really wanted maybe throw a like a moment lens on there like a wide angle lens uh, I do that a lot for pro mode stuff because traditionally Samsung hasn't allowed us to use the other lenses and the main sensor on the Samsung phones is always the best anyways so we're looking at this image this is ISO 3200 and this is obviously looking even worse so that is a galaxy actually right there uh, that might be Andromeda yeah that is Andromeda so that's pretty cool and interesting. So you can barely see that little blob, that noisy little ugly blob is Andromeda. That's the closest galaxy to us, by the way, to the Milky Way. It will eventually collide with us. Uh, but you can see down here, but you can see down here the color fringing and the noise from it just being broken from being 3200, from being too high, pushed too hard and there is not a whole lot you can do to fix that. I mean, even if we come down here to the detail and we crank up this noise reduction, it's just gonna make everything blurry. And then even if we were to crank up the color noise reduction uh, well past what I would ever do, uh, it, there's no fixing that. So you'd have to desaturate the purples, paint that out, crop it out, whatever. But there's just, there's not a lot of saving that. And then you can see the banding and everything up here too. Uh, and that's just, you see all that color banding. That's just that's broken, and that would never, never fly for for me for sure. So by comparison, let's look at the R5. So I shot the R5 in worse conditions, in turn or in worse settings. I pumped the ISO up higher than the phones just to give you an idea and the R5 is not the the best for Astro stuff I would have preferred to use my R6 but I'm filming with it right now and I was filming it with it out there but the R5 is still one of the best cameras in Canon lineup that you can get for astrophotography okay so let's take a look at this image here so this is the shot with the R5 at the Milky Way just like the S21 Ultra was so I shot this even higher uh, of an ISO at 6400 versus 1600 on the S21 and you can see already Andromeda is way more pronounced so you can also see that even the noise level at 6400 is uh, much better on the R5 than the S21 at 1600 and of course that's to be expected this is like a near four thousand dollar camera with you know a thousand dollar plus lens on there so that is to be expected. You can also see a lot more detail in the Milky Way itself. And this is just the raw. I haven't done anything to this image at all. And I'm not going to just for the sake of this video being super long already. So and then the other image here from the R5. So here we have 1600 ISO which is again even higher than the uh, Samsung phones were. And we're looking at a much we have the, the motion blur again because the R5 has such a uh, big pixel density that you need to do a slower shutter speed in order to uh, get the perceived 
motion blur out of there. So you can see Orion's Nebula a little bit more pronounced there in the R5, but what you'll notice is just a lot less noise in the image than the phone. And again, that's to be expected. I just wanted to throw those out there to show you uh, comparison between a super high end and then how the phones are coming even close to that is just it's pretty impressive so if you're a beginner and or you have nothing else or you don't want to take your big systems or anything like that then it is worth noting that it is potentially possible uh, to get some decent images out of this I'm happy with both of these images in terms of knowing that they came from a phone and also knowing that if I were to share them on just Instagram by itself uh, they would look absolutely fine for most people. It's when you really start comparing them to other things like the big mirrorless cameras and such that you're going to start seeing the difference and it's going to hurt. <laughs> So, like I said before, I will be doing uh, some Milky Way stuff and some more Astro stuff with the S21. And it was interesting to see, you know, the stuff about the changes with the uh, the aperture for, for the ultra-wide versus the uh, regular sensor, stuff like that. So, I would say, you know, if you, if you want to take Astro seriously with the phone, then use the main sensor in Pro Mode. And if you want that wider angle, then get, you know, like a moment lens like I've done in a lot of my other videos. You can check those out. That'll widen it up, but it'll keep it on the main sensor. So you're still keeping that f1.8 versus that f2.0. Definitely, I would not go above, you know, 1,000 or 1,600 if you, unless it's just absolutely necessary. Because at that point, you're just pushing these phones too hard. And also, you need to keep in mind your location. So I'm in the middle of New Mexico, in southwest New Mexico, in the mountains, 7,000 feet up. I'm in some of the darkest skies in the entire country. And a lot of people are going to try this at their home and they're going to put the same settings as me and they're going to get white images. And they say, they ask me why they get white images all the time. That's because you're probably in a city or you're probably in light pollution or the moon is up or whatever. You need to take all of that into account and understand you might not get dark skies like me based on where we live. All right, so I'm going to wrap it up there. If you guys have any questions about anything that I did or didn't do, uh, with the comparisons there leave them in the comments below and I will definitely answer them I will if I can remember I'm gonna try to go ahead and throw these images up the raw images on uh, On my website so that you guys can check them out and kind of pixel pixel peep for yourselves uh, If you really want to dive into the raw images So there should be a link for that down below and definitely subscribe to the channel if you haven't already if you made it this far and you haven't subscribed you should because I've got new videos every week I really appreciate you guys watching this whole thing for me and the amount of interest that there's been in this like I said I've had just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of DMS just flooding me constantly so I'm gonna try to do more of this stuff for you guys so if you enjoyed it and it helped you out you should definitely hit that like button for me because that's the best way to help me and the video and the channel out and all of that good stuff and that's it it's second breakfast time i will see you in the next episode thanks for watching